Um, well, so I was running home from work, like I, I do most days, and I was listening to podcasts. And at the time, there weren't there weren't many running podcasts. There weren't. Or, do you know what there are? There are lots of running podcasts, but they were very specific about you know fine details, about cadence, and about right. speeds. And mm. I was like, well, okay, look, I just want a podcast that reminds me about the feel good of running. Mm. I don't want to know anything technical. I just want to know why I should be running and I want to be reminded that it's really great and mm. I want to be reminded that I won't regret it. So I want to create something and that is how RunPod was born. Hello and welcome to the Runners World podcast with me, Rick Pearson. And me, Ben Hobson. And our guest today is Jenny Faulkner. Ah, oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on, Jenny. It feels very professional. I'm with two professional runners <laughs> on a professional <laughs> podcast. Well, oh. you couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> <laughs> On both accounts, really on both accounts. How are you? you yeah, well? very good, thank you. So I, so you're recording this directly opposite where I do my radio show. So I literally right. came off air, crossed the road and came here. So it's all good. It's good. Sprint, run? Um, I did. I'm wearing heels. <laughs> yeah. So I did like one of those kind of like half jogs. Oh, good. Oh, lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good, like good, you've good. tripped. Professional, That's it. professional totter. That's it. Unfortunately, I was wearing heels at New Year and um, I danced quite a lot. And then the next day I had... I had a sore ankle, which is not great when you're entering, you know, a 16 week marathon yeah, training yeah, yeah, yeah. plan. And instantly I had a balloon sized oh, ankle. Right. So my marathon training has been pushed back a week. So heels and me, no running, no, more. no running, no, no jumping, no dancing. That's a great way to get injured though, isn't it? I mean, it's no, can I just say it's the most, so I had four months of being injured last year. Yeah. And um, I'm just back. December got the all clear to go running and I was loving it and I'm having a great time. Yeah. And then wore heels and danced like an idiot <laughs> on New Year at a ski resort. I think that's and fine. And didn't get injured skiing, got injured in heels on the dance floor at New Year. I'm kind of fine with that. That's I think good, in yeah. terms of like, you know, that's, you can do it rolling an ankle, stepping off the pavement. You'd be annoyed about that. But I feel yeah. like if you're having a good time, yeah. it's yeah. all good. Yeah, I once injured myself uh, 10 pin bowling. Oh no! <laughs> Just well, it's like, went, like, pop went, a hip went, out. Went for it a bit too much. It was an ankle again. So yeah, I see, it's can so happen. Awful, isn't it? It's so embarrassing as well. When you really want to make it sound like quite a dramatic yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. My, it was a hundred miler. It was a hundred mile ultra. Oh, yeah, it was, it was nice. Rolled the arch, uh, rolled the ankle around mile eighty. <laughs> I hope um, you got a strike and it wasn't one of those ones yeah. where it just went down the lane at the side. Yeah, yeah it's like gutter ball. It's a gutter ball. Yeah. Um, let's get into your injury and then your, the comeback because it was that's it's been pretty serious. Oh, like, it was gutting. So yeah. gutting. Um, I, do you know what? I'm having run for quite a while as well. I know more than anything that you you want to avoid injury. Yeah. That's the ultimately the number one thing as a runner. You want to avoid injury because yeah. there's nothing worse than sitting at home. <laughs> No. And hearing about people running or being in the car and watching everyone overtake you running and you dream of running and suddenly running becomes the best thing in the world yeah, that yeah. you just can't do. And um, I, I was in that situation for far too long last year. And I, I, I genuinely haven't pinpointed what caused the injury. Oh, okay. It could be the way I run. It could be the trainers. We, we still haven't pinpointed it, but I know what it was. I got I tore my IT band, right. oh, wow. which confused what the injury was. Everyone on the MRI went, well, that's the injury. But actually the injury was was called glute tendinopathy, right. which was basically just a swollen backside, which yeah. is really annoying. Always, I always get things with my glutes, and it's clearly because I'm not strengthening enough. So basically I've been doing gym work continuously for four months, and I love it, Yeah, but it's not running, is it? No. It's just not the same. So um, when in December, finally, I was good to go again. I was delighted to get back running, but I've had to, I've had to take a really boring approach to it and be sensible. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, not just run mm, yeah. the same route every day like I used to, and not just go out and do a crazy long run or do intervals because they're really hard and they'll make me sweat. I now have to go. Okay, maximum three runs a week. Yeah. I've got to do a short run, I've got to do an easy run, and then I've got to do a long run and maybe slowly can int introduce intervals. Yeah. It's so annoying. What well, is that? There is definitely a switching point where. Maybe if you get into running younger or, I mean, I didn't get into running when I was that young, but you certainly like the initial period of running tends to be this sort of like, just going out and yeah, yeah, freedom yeah. and oh, the expression of joy. And, uh, <laughs> and then you just switch over at that point where you go, well, I've got to spend at least five hours doing uh, very specific exercises. Some mobility work. Some mobility work. Yeah. Oh, There's God. nothing worse. Just my hips today. I've just got to do it. And, and then you go, oh, this is running now. This is, this is I'm what in it. it is. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly what I'm here for. Yeah. So, um, so every time I run, I just have a big cheesy smile on my face. <laughs> yeah. Even if I'm dying because I'm out of breath and my I've lost some cardio fitness, I don't care. I'm loving it. I love every thing about being back out there and I am um, if you see me when you're out running please do smile back because I do smile at everyone oh that's so I'm just good. so happy but good. no one else smiles have you oh, noticed? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Like I, had a, I had a wave and a good morning the other morning from another runner. Did you? And I was, uh, good morning back. But I was just like, it felt very alien. Because then, so the next guy who ran past, I went, morning, nothing. Because <laughs> the thing is, we talk was, about the running community yeah. being a really great place. Everyone's got each other's back. We're all friends. I've made loads of friends yeah. that I've never even met, you know, through Instagram because right, yeah, they're yeah. runners. And um, I've got um, the Run Pod Run Club. We've got this huge Facebook group. We know everyone. But then the minute you go out and actually run, nobody smiles. It's just crazy. <laughs> so hard. Everyone's just really distracted. Oh, God, this is really hard, actually. This is it. I've got a theory that I think people are friendlier on trails. If you pass someone on a trail, maybe because there's less people, but there's something about the urban environment that, like, waving and saying hello has a slight, like, oh, is that, is that person a bit odd? <laughs> True, to it, okay. which, is, which is totally unfair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I also think if I smile at someone, are they going to go, why is she smiling at me? Because if someone <laughs> smiles at me, I'm like, are they smiling because I look like I'm struggling? Yeah, there's a message behind yeah. the smile. What right. does the smile mean? <laughs> yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a favourite place to run? Um, I, well, I do actually, and um, I love running by the sea. So, yeah. I mean, I know I live in London. There's no sea available to <laughs> me, so maybe that's why I love it so much more. But um, whenever I go away anywhere where there's like a coastal running path, yeah. I'm out there and loving it. And I used to do a show. I used to host a pro program called Fantasy Homes by the Sea. Mm. So it was by the sea all the time. And I used to just get up every morning and run, whether it's Bournemouth or Brighton mm. or um, Scarborough. I'd go out for a run. But my favourite place to run is south of Spain, by the sea. And um, there's a stretch near Marbella and it kind of goes 10 miles right along the coast. It's just lovely. Wow. It's yeah. it's. It's just great. And you, if you go in the morning, you see the sunrise. If you go in the evening, you see the sunset. And everyone's out running, walking. Mm. They've all got their big hiking sticks. I mean, it's, it's just full of people yeah. keeping fit, no yeah. matter what the weather. And I love it. Are you a holiday runner? Absolutely. Right. I don't get, for me, going on holiday, you automatically, the first thing in the case is fitness gear. Yeah. Trainers. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. And it depends, as you say, like where you're going. Well, I might need two pairs. Oh, for sure. Oh, you take, oh no, you see. Yeah. Road, pair and, no, road pair and trail pair. Well, you see, because I have, well, no, you see, I do trainers and then I have to fit in golf shoes as well. Ah. So I'm like, mm, one pair of trainers will be fine because I've got to get the golf Of gear course, in. you can't just wear trainers on a golf course, right? Really? No, 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 come, come on. on. Sorry. You get thrown out. <laughs> Can't go run in the greens just, with just you. Done a bit of pitch and putt. And I think you, that, that's, that's a free throw, isn't it? Pitch, pitch and putt, you can. You can. They do have the same grip. That's the only uh, thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But Almost like a track spike. Could you get a track spike on the greens? For maybe. I mean, very uncomfortable. I haven't tried that. <laughs> um, have you been playing golf a long time? Um, about four years. Become obsessed with it. As really. Well. Yeah. And I think that happened. The reason I took up golf was because I used to finish my show at 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. I'd run. I'd even train for the marathon. I'd even do long training runs and still have like about six hours spare before I had to pick my daughter up from school. Oh, yeah. So I was like, well, what am I going to do on the days I'm not working? And so I went, golf is. Golf. Yeah. Here's so something that takes it. up a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> and is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if, I, well, you clearly don't. <laughs> I, yeah, 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 I've exposed myself as not being a golfer mm, there. I have. I do play. Yeah. My dad plays a lot. And so I've been around. I go out with him whenever I'm back yeah. home and play. And it's good. I like it. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm like, I've got enough to get me around. But when it goes wrong, I'm immediately furious that I'm not better at golf, having yeah. never practiced, <laughs> never practiced, but assume that I will absolutely yeah. be able to. Why can't just, I do that? Yeah. Why is my short game so bad? <laughs> I know. It's funny, isn't yeah. it? You just assume that you're going to be brilliant yeah. from the start. But that's, I think it's such, it's such a different sport to going out for a run, yeah. okay? Because it's slower. Yeah. You're, I mean, walking, I mean, you can't really lug all these clubs and run, although unless you're doing speed golf, speed of course, golf. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I would like to try, <laughs> yeah. to be perfectly yeah. honest. Um, but it is completely different, a different pace, but it's quite nice to combine the two. Mm. So go for your run, yeah. then go and play golf, and yeah. your steps are through the roof at the end of the My dad is there. quite, like, and it's a totally different engine. Obviously, if you're walking a long way and, you mm. know, and, and we go running and I've, do like X number of miles and come back and I'll dad will be like oh you're very fit going out for all these runs and then do you want to have a round of golf and I'll be out there with him walking I'll be like I'm so tired dad <laughs> we've been walking for four hours <laughs> yeah. and he's swinging and all this and I was just like this is he's way fitter than me I think it's funny isn't it you can run a marathon or I don't mm. know if you guys have done ultras or whatever you can do all these but even just going upstairs can leave you out of breath sometimes <laughs> you're like yeah. this is crazy yeah. what is going on <laughs> yeah yeah it's very specific fitness isn't it it's not um yeah, not one type of activity gets you 
everything. Yeah. As far as the, the strength and conditioning stuff you're doing, are you doing like CrossFit? Or are you going? Are you lifting really heavy weights? What, what's it look like for you? Well, it's, it's really interesting. I've been on a bit of a learning curve recently because of this. So um, I'm mid forties, and with that, obviously, it's, everything changes in your body as a female as well. Mm. It's really different. And uh, so from now on, I've been told that actually the the ideal thing to do is to lift heavy weights. Mm, yeah. You can't just go and pick up two 5K dumbbells and go, yeah, I'm going to pump out 50 of these <laughs> yeah, yeah. and that will be me done. You've got to really do something that, that does push you to your limit. Mm. And so, yeah, I started working with a trainer and I was going to this gym, and it's a CrossFit gym, yeah. and I was going to it to do CrossFit sessions, but actually realised that quite a lot of that isn't necessarily beneficial to me in my mm. running. So instead, I train with one of the trainers there, the head coach there, twice a week, and he just basically does everything to focus on running moves right. and requiring heavy weights. So we're doing a lot of a lot of lunging, a lot of squatting, a lot of deadlifting. But actually it's brilliant because mm. it's things if I went to a gym on my own, yeah. I don't really know what to do. Mm. And although I'm highly motivated and yeah. if you gave me a program I'd follow it to to a T. Yeah. But doing these kind of exercises is quite often better with someone who knows what oh, they're doing mm. right next to you especially when it comes to form and stuff like, yeah because you can be like oh well i know this exercise is meant to target x muscle whatever it is but you kind of like your body always like has path of least resistance will always be kind of like the easiest motion and i remember very much being like oh, i'll be fine lifting that up and the guy was just like demonstrate and i would do it and he'd be like okay now tuck your pelvis and do all this and it'd be like <laughs> now it really like now I'm doing it properly. And yeah, you suddenly yeah, yeah. realise like it's, it's so important. It can be intimidating, sort of... I think, as well. Particularly heavy weights. I I, yeah. I don't even think that. I think oh, if I was like getting the like back squatting out and stuff, I feel like oh, I'd probably just give it a miss in case I did it wrong and injured myself. I think there's a bit of a mental hurdle yeah. people. And also, I, I maybe like me, you wouldn't push yourself, so I'll do yes. it until. That's that's quite exhausting, and they'll be like, "No, no, you still got another ten yeah. in, you know, ten in the can there." Yeah. And I'm like, "No, I haven't." And then they make you do, you make you push you to your limit, basically, right. which is actually what you need. And um, I hadn't done any weight training or personal training for quite a long time, and I think actually I really notice a difference, and yeah. it's really benefiting me. And years ago, when I got my PB back in the day, and mm. um, for the London Marathon, I was weight training twice a week. And I was really strong and I ran the marathon at exactly the pace I wanted. And I wanted to get 3.30 and I got 3.31. So it was one minute out. Yeah. And I slowed down, I know, at the end. But I wasn't, I ran the same pace pretty much the whole time. And I was so strong that my arms just carried me and my legs carried me. And I wasn't tired mm. at all. Mm. So there is an element of truth that weight training does complement your running and does make you stronger. Not necessarily in terms of you're able to lift heavier weights, but does make you um, stronger physically and that you won't get tired yeah, running that resilient. long distance. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think that's true, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Wow. Um, so you've done London eight times, Jenny. That's a, that's a lot. So, I mean, yeah. I, I love London. I think I might have done it four times. So eight is just incredible. I love it. Yeah. I love what is it about it? Well, I've and I've done it for multiple charities, and also I've done it as an ambassador for the marathon as well. So, well, firstly, I'm quite lazy, and I live in London, so it's really <laughs> easy to get to the start line. Love that. <laughs> um, but I used to do my radio show in the morning and then go straight to the start line, and I'd yeah. be like, I'm gonna miss the start. So I used to, um, for about four years, I was live on air, then went wow. and did the show. So I was already pretty shattered by so the like, time I got to the kit, start so you in your kit? Like, uh, in my kit, four hours on air um, from like six or from 5.30 or whatever in the morning. And then I'd leave because I think it was 10 o'clock start then. Yeah. So I'd leave the studio at nine right. and head as quickly as I could Amazing. to the start line. Um, I love it. I just love the course. I think because... I run a lot of the course in my own time. Mm -hmm. I really love it and I appreciate it. And I I think that when you can run that course on closed roads as well, you appreciate it so sure. much more and yeah, you yeah, see yeah. things. It's like wherever you run, you know, you're always running on roads. There are traffic's out, there are people everywhere. But to run on any course when the roads are closed, yeah. it's, it's such a, a treat, really. You get yeah. to notice so much. Like it's sort of, even if it's a route that you've done a hundred times, was that shop always there? I know. <laughs> like when you're going to go through and you go, that's nice in there, isn't it? Because it was probably hidden by like people and cars and all that yeah, sort of yeah. stuff. So, you know, it kind of does reveal 
whatever city it is that you're familiar with, if you run a race in that city, you're all of a sudden just like... Yes. You see yeah. more. Yeah. There's, have you ever done the London Landmarks Half Marathon? We're both doing it, actually. This year, I've never I've done it. I've like seen it. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, they put signposts everywhere, so you're running along. Yeah. So it's a relatively new. I think it's only in its fourth year, maybe now. Um, fourth or fifth, certainly. You run along, and they'll say, look up now. And you'll look up, and you'll go, oh. And then there'll be a, did you know? And you, you didn't know that that right. statue was there, right. or you didn't. Look right now, the oldest church in London. Uh, look up, and you'll see a golden grasshopper. <laughs> and you're like, oh, wow. I mean, literally, you see so much, and they signpost it as well, which yeah. is really interesting. And that I think that's great. what's quite nice about that yeah, race. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. bit of a sightseeing tour yeah. at the same time. Uh, but in terms of London, I, look, I love the challenge of doing something like a half or a full marathon. Yeah. For me, it is a challenge. And if, you know, there are lots of people who do further distances, but for me, a marathon's the furthest I've ever run. Yeah. And so it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And taking on a 26 point two miler means you want to love that course and there are plenty of other marathons around the world which have I have turned my head at but it's just practically it's not going to work with being a parent and having a full-time job so uh, London is brilliant that I've been able to get in a few times yeah and doing it again this April as well I'm doing it again this April yeah and I'm very excited about it so ankle aside from the dancing yes how is the training yeah well so it's really early days because we've literally just started so um not sure when this podcast is going out, but we're mid-January now. So it's, what, week two of training. Right. And uh, all going all right so far. <laughs> Good. Good. Those early days, this is great. I know, I'm, it's yeah, nice, isn't yeah, it? Early days yeah. are lovely. But because I'm, tra- usually I would train four or five times a week. And because I've had to rein in the running, and I've been told really only do three runs a week for the first mm. couple of months anyway, it's a whole different approach for me. And I'm fearful that I'm not going to be trained enough. Now, I know loads of people mm. have done a three run. Have you ever done three runs a yeah, week? Yeah, I have actually. First marathon was sort of three runs and two cross training days. I think it's called, um, it's got a term of Furman training program that was kind of based around three, but, but quite quality runs. So it's, kind of, yeah. And the cross training is cardio or, cross, or weight training? Most, mostly cardio. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. this is, so I've, I've, I'm going to wait and see how it goes. So I'll be doing two kind of strength and conditioning sessions and three hopefully it will go to four uh, running sessions yeah. a week and yeah it's easy at the moment and the distances are quite short mm. but the intervals that I've been doing are already shattering <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually was like god because I'd had four months out last year yeah. my cardio fitness is down oh my goodness I yeah. had that real burning lungs thing the first time I like it though yeah oh it's, I was around this morning and this morning was minus whatever it was and you've got that cold air coming in and you're sort of a bit of effort here and there and you're like oh it feels good it's it kind of like warms it? you up yeah. kind of like it feels kind of... good afterwards yeah yeah, yeah not definitely. necessarily always while you're doing no, it yeah, no, that's no. the thing about running and this is what i think is hilarious that we all love running yeah. and you know some we might not struggle for motivation to get out there but we can all moan about going out for a run <laughs> but we can all brag about how brilliant it was when we got home yeah, yeah. and i think and we all know we won't regret it yeah but it's just getting up off the sofa, getting out of bed. Sometimes yeah, you can can't be, hard be bothered. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Can we talk about your podcast, the Run Pod uh, podcast? So yeah. Tell us about like how it started. What's it? What's it all about? Who's it for? Um, well, so I was running home from work, like I, I do most days, and I was listening to podcasts. And at the time, there weren't there weren't many running podcasts. There weren't. Or, do you know what there are? There are lots of running podcasts. But they were very specific about, you know, fine details, about cadence and about right. speeds. And mm. I was like, well, OK, look, I just want a podcast that reminds me about the feel good of running. Mm. I don't want to know anything technical. I just want to know why I should be running. And I want to be reminded that it's really great. And mm. I want to be reminded that I won't regret it. So I want to create something. And that is how RunPod was born. Right. So I have a few friends that I called upon. I said, will you come and just do kind of like pilot episodes? Yeah. And they ended up being episodes that were released. And so, yeah, I think I remember um, Ben Shepard and Peter Andre were my first two guests. <laughs> and so they, as you can imagine, their episodes would be entirely different to what you might imagine a running podcast For to sure. be all about. Yeah, yeah. But it's just really nice to get a yeah. different feel of different people's running experience and their running journey. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You don't have to be Paula Radcliffe or Mo Farah to enjoy and appreciate running. And anyone can. And in fact, you know, there are millions of people out there who, you know, will never win a race. I'm one of them, but still love running. Yeah, yeah. And they might 
They might be more of a plodder than a sprinter. They might be more of a terminator than a gazelle, but still they're (laughs) out there and they're running it and they're giving it their best shot. And some days they might struggle, but sometimes you just need to be reminded why actually, you know what, go and do it because you'll spend more time procrastinating and thinking about it and you could have done it in that time. So a run pod is designed to be something you listen to to remind you of why you should run or maybe while you're running something to motivate you or spur you on a little bit further. And hopefully maybe along the way you'll get a few tips. How did you, how have you found talking to people about running? Because we find actually it's like one of those great things that you get someone in who, as you say, not not known for being a runner perhaps, or but running plays an important part in their life in terms of they use it for their well-being or just for fitness or all these sorts of, and they come in and you sort of, you hear them sort of mildly drift off into that sort of like, space where they're kind of like oh and then I was doing it like that and you kind yeah. of go oh wow they've really got it like it's kind of really sick and you learn so much from mm. other people and their experiences of running yeah I think every do you know we all can chat to each other it's like yeah. um if you are anywhere in the world and you meet someone you have nothing in common with but you find out they run you can chat for an hour easy yeah but you can chat about trainers where have you run <laughs> Where have you run recently? Have you yeah. done any races? I mean, you chat about all of that. And yeah. you don't even, you might not even know their name. You might know where they, not know where they come from, but you'll have that common bond and it's running. And I think that's what's lovely. And I remember one time years ago going to a, like a running event. I don't know, some brand had just got lots of people together to run around a park. And we all got to know, we all just chatted about running for ages. It was hilarious. I mean, I remember just coming home really late because I'd just been chatting in a pub to people about running. <laughs> yeah. And my husband was like, so what, what did you do? And I was like, well, we drank Diet Coke and we chatted about running. Yeah. And he was like, wow, well, that sounds fun. <laughs> I was like, actually, it was really fun. <laughs> but if you're not a runner, yeah, you don't the get outside it. Yeah. World. And oh, if you do. But yeah. then I've also had loads of guests on my podcast who are going, well, I don't know if I can come on because... Yes, I run, but I don't think I can talk about running. Interesting. And yeah. then you ask them about running and that's it. They do a monologue for half an hour. Yeah. yeah. So we had, um, it was like Bryony Gordon came on and... and she's so um, funny. But she loves running. Yeah, 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 yeah. So funny, And Deborah yeah. James actually, and they were talking about, they didn't identify as runners, but they ran, obviously. And it was like very much like a basis for a lot of the stuff they did. But they wouldn't say, I'm not really a, a runner mm. because they were worried about saying that because of the pace they ran or the, the, they weren't running very far or and you sort of go hold on you you've, you run three times a week yeah. Yeah, and you use enough. it as yeah. your main you great you, you you know you get you get great joy from it like that's running yeah, yeah. that's literally it and they're like oh okay good thanks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks yeah. that. that's gonna, it there, there yeah. are many many people like that out there and so and so that's what my podcast is uh, trying to appeal to them as well as you know the other end of the spectrum the mm. people that have run for years and mm. just want to go out and have something to listen to while they're you know yeah. doing whatever pounding pavements or doing trails yeah are you uh, big into running tech? Because we sort of divide here. Ben's really into running tech, and I've got like a Casio. So we're sort of two ends. Oh, you of the don't spectrum. have. I thought it was just stan- standard practice. I'm <laughs> sitting here with my Garmin. Oh, you've got a double hit. I've got a Whoop and a Garmin. Wow. So there's no way my heart rate's not being recorded <laughs> right now. <laughs> I've just recently got into um, on this on the Garmin because I literally got it to monitor my runs, yeah. and slowly I'm going. What's my sleep, sleep? like? Sleep. <laughs> and then I'm like, HRV, what yeah. the hell yeah, yeah, yeah. is that? That's what so this is. is this it? is a pure like sleep, heart rate variability sort of tracking I thing. Don't, I'm still not there fully getting the HRV thing. It's, a, it's very much like a metric which indicates how much strain your body has dealt with and if it's processed it for the next day. So right. it's kind of like if your heart rate fluctuates more, your variability between beats almost is kind of, the more it does it, the, the more primed you are for load throughout that day. So this is what this thing tells the, me. The all Casio about. does that as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is that one, the, is that one from a, that you got free in a garage? <laughs> <laughs> gone are the days where you could like, wake up. Pounds. You could wake up in the morning and go, "How do I feel? I feel okay. Let's go." Yeah. Like it's you know, I do find the bind of tech. You can't, you yeah. can't say that. You've got to go. Hang on. What does my Garmin say? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, not allowed to do anything well, today. Well, the interesting one was I woke up this morning and I was like, I feel pretty good. I think I slept quite well. And this thing was like, you are forty eight percent recovered. <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't feel like forty eight, so I'm going for my run. And you know, and it's, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. kind of you obviously have to yeah be the you're the you're the person in charge when yeah. it comes to these sorts of things. But I do I do enjoy a bit of tech. But is it, it's creeped more into your running. Yeah, it's definitely creeping more into it. And um, I mean, I genuinely have gone through everything and I've found that some of them are a bit more 
a little bit more inaccurate than others. Yes. And so I've turned to this one. I do enjoy it for, but I don't. I don't use it to its full yeah. capability. I, I mean, I literally don't use every function. I use it to yeah. monitor my runs and see how far I've gone. And even when I'm running, I don't necessarily pay attention to it as much as yeah. I should. And I'm going to have to work on that a bit more. I think that's good though. We had a whole thing about running without watches mm. and I couldn't I don't want to run without one <laughs> I'd be lost <laughs> no what about, what about music would you run to music oh yeah, yeah. I run to music if I'm not listening to a podcast so yeah. I like listening to something because yeah. for me also it's my time out yeah and so um my day is pretty busy and I'm always chasing my tail. I'm always going, oh, God, I've got to be there in five minutes. I better run quickly. Yeah. So if I'm running, usually it's because I'm commuting or I've got two yeah. hours free. I'm fitting it in. And so in that time, I also want to fit in other things yeah. I want to listen to and catch up on. And sometimes just for me, listen to music or listen to podcasts actually is a way of relaxing because yeah. I wouldn't get a chance otherwise. Um, and the times I don't listen to anything is usually because my battery on my <laughs> earphones is dead and I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> oh. And I've actually really enjoyed it and I run faster. Interesting. Yeah. That was me this morning. My commute ran in, podcast on, exactly that, like relaxing time. Just feels like a complete like separation. Yeah, I, don't, I, listen, I was listening to Smartless. Do you ever listen to that one? No, I haven't. It's, I, I only ever listen to kind of like ones that are comedy based. So it's Jason Bateman, uh, Sean, who the guy from Will and Grace, I can't remember his name, and uh, Will Arnett. Okay. And it's, and it's like proper celebrity funny people. Okay, I'm going to have to listen and to And I it. just, it's completely but like, it's completely separate. Like it's, 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 it's away from absolutely anything yeah, okay, that I can okay. relate to. But yeah, like, here's the thing. Yeah. It's impossible to watch something and laugh and run. Oh, I've, right. And I've fallen over yeah. on a treadmill. <laughs> yeah. So um, I know, look, it's it's not the most hilarious thing in the world, but I did watch once an episode of Friends, okay? Yeah, yeah. And and it was an episode of Brad Pitt. It's actually funny. You, thinking about it now, it doesn't sound funny. But when you're on a treadmill and running like at 14 kilometers an hour and something funny happens, yeah. I fell off the treadmill. So I'm now very cautious. If I'm laughing, laughing and running is yeah, hard. Comedy free podcast. It's really hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely That's laughed funny. out loud a few times this morning. And you just, you know, if there's people around and there's a guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's going on? You're already saying hello to people. Yeah, as well, aren't hello. You? hello. <laughs> yeah, it looks mad. It looks mad. Yeah, yeah. but there we go. Jenny, thanks so much for coming on the Runners World podcast. Thank Great you. to talk to you about uh, running, yeah. Thank you very much for having me and uh, good luck with everything that you're doing this year in you terms too. of running. Yeah. I'll see you at London Landmarks. Sounds good. Okay. Maybe at London Marathon. We should sort that out, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, you're just saying that now to try and beat me. <laughs> That's <laughs> obviously what you're trying to do. Absolutely not. And um, if, can I just say to any of your listeners, if you're doing any of these races as well, good luck. We'll see you down there. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of this week's Runners World podcast. Thank you very much to our guest, Jenny Faulkner, and to you, of course, for watching. Do you do anything? No. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, thanks so much for your time coming in. Thank you, that's, that's all right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah.